how are you part two as the lord helps me i will continue when he says it's enough i will stop the sermon and the series today we we'll, last sunday we looked at some of the experiences of prophet elijah as he went from one type of feeling to another type of feeling and i explained to you that when you feel up or down sometimes it's not because you are strong or you are weak. It's because you are human. We all go through these experiences of life from time to time. But whatever experience you are going through right now, God Almighty will strengthen you. And you will come out stronger in the mighty name of Jesus. So today we look at the experience of Peter and a few points from there for you. Not for Peter, a few points for you. Number one. People are watching you. Please write it down. People are... Please tell the person sitting next to you, do you know that people are watching you? <laughs> Peter thought he was in hiding, that he was safe and he was anonymous. The Bible said he sat outside the palace pretending not to have anything to do with Jesus. But the more he tried to hide, the more he was revealed. The Bible said the first lady went to him and said, this man, I think I saw you with Jesus. He said, no, I don't know that man. The second time, the person that came did not even tell to speak to Peter. He said, to the people around, is it not true that this man is one of them? Peter still said, no, I don't know him. He tried to hide. And the third time, the people gathered there. All of them looked at Peter and said, Peter, truly you are one of them. The more you try to hide, the more you will be revealed. I pray for somebody here from the bottom of my heart. God Almighty will give you the grace to live right in public and in private in the mighty name of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, it says we are compassed about by a great cloud of witnesses. The people who are watching you are more than you can imagine. If you think you can hide, run to some, some aspects of Nigeria, where you don't think anybody will, you'll be amazed. The person that will welcome you will welcome you with your name. Hello? How many people know what I'm talking about? You have experienced it before. And you wonder, how did you follow me to this place? People are watching you. People are watching you. Peter did not know. He assumed that he was anonymous. But the more he tried to hide, the more he was disclosed. I pray for you. Any sin that you have been doing or planning to do privately, by reason of this sermon, you will stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's put that passage on the screen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. So you are, we, are, we are compassed about by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every every weight and the sin we don't easily beset us. There are some things that you struggle with. You struggle with. And then you believe that well, when nobody is watching, you can do it. Ah, the people that are watching are more than you can think. I prophesy upon you the grace to do what is right in public and in private. May God give unto you in Jesus' name. And in verse 2 of that passage, says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I don't know what you are contending with, but for as long as you continue to look unto Jesus, whatever may be that challenge, you will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. And whether in public or in private, your faith is tried, you will not deny Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. So live right. Walk right and speak right wherever you may be. Live right, 
walk right and, and speak right. This is what we do in Jesus' name. Number two, God is watching you. Not only are people watching you, God Almighty himself is watching you. As you follow this sermon, you can think about Peter, but much more, think about yourself. Because this sermon is about your life. Each time I have some experiences with people, and I say, yet, these are Christians. But it just goes to confirm that what you see in public is not necessarily what you see in private. God is watching you. And God watches you in advance. Please say after me, God watches you in advance. Even the things that you have not done, that you are planning to do, God had already, has already seen it ahead. In Matthew 26, 34 to 35, he said to Peter, very soon, before this day is over, you will deny you ever know me. As Peter already denied him, it has not happened. But God already told him what will happen. The same is true about you. What you are planning to do that you have not already done, God already sees it. And I pray for somebody here. That bad thing you are considering, that thing that you know is not right with God, you are the one God is talking to. By reason of this sermon, you will surrender it in Jesus' name. Each time I have a reason to counsel some workers occasionally, especially the ones that I know, they find it difficult to obey the word of God. I use the example of Judas. That you need to come to the point where you must understand that God sees you in advance. You need to understand that point. He sees you in advance. And because of that, you must caution yourself and just follow what he says. He said to Judas, Judas, I know that you are about to go and betray me. Judas had not betrayed him yet. He was going to betray him. You will think that a wise person will say, ah, he has already caught me, and that he will change his mind. But what did Judas do? He still went ahead and he still did it. All eyes closed. I don't know what it is that you are planning. You have a mind to do. But by reason of this word, you know that God is saying to you, don't do it. All eyes closed. Please lift up that hand. I want to pray for you. I don't know what it is, but I want to pray for you. God bless you. Just lift it up very well. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Just lift it up very well. God bless you, my brother. Father, I commit all these ones into your loving hands. They have heard your word that you have seen them in advance. And they have decided to stop what they were about to do. The grace to indeed stop and not proceed. Grant unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God is also watching you in real time. Not only is he watching you in advance, he's watching you as you are doing the things. In Jeremiah 23, verse 24, Jeremiah 23, verse 24, he says, Can any hide himself? in secret places that I shall not see him. Is it possible that any can hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Do I not feel the heaven and the earth? You know, the sermon is titled, How are you? God knows everything that you are going through. 
He knows what you are doing, what you are about to do. And then Psalm 94, verse 9. Let's put it on the screen. Psalm 94, verse 9. For anyone that is still thinking, maybe God will not see or he will not hear. Say, he that planted the hair, shall he not? The, the God that gave you the hair, is it possible that he will not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not? You know, see, I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. By reason of this sermon, may God direct you well in the mighty name of Jesus. And may you follow his counsel in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not miss your way in Jesus' name. And the grace to live perpetually in the presence of the Almighty. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. Please rise on your feet and turn into prayer. Father, I know your eyes are upon me. Please don't let me disappoint you. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. I know your eyes are upon me. Father, don't let me disappoint you. Talk to him. He knows what you are going through. I know your eyes are upon me. Father, don't let me disappoint you. Hold on to me. Keep me pure, holy, fervent. In all situations, Lord, don't let me disappoint you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You will not fail in Jesus' name. You will not fall in Jesus' name. You will not disappoint him in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, avoid arrogance. Humble your self. This is such an important point. Please pay good attention. The future that God has proposed for you is a great future. But you must follow him and let him lead the way. Whenever you get to the point where you think you know what you are doing, you, you, you know what you are doing. And, and in the word of God does not pass. It's not you he's talking about. You know what you are doing. You are in danger. In Matthew 26, verse 34 to 35, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, danger ahead. Danger ahead. Peter said, you don't know me, O oh Lord. You don't know me, O oh you don't know how fervent I am, Jesus. You don't know. Even if it means I will die with you, I will never deny you. Too much arrogance. Too much faith in your ability. Do you think you know it all? You are very confident about your ability. You are very confident about what you think is right. <laughs> Just in case you have forgotten, John 15 verse 5 says, Without me you can, without God, none of us, the best of us, is nothing. Without God, the best of us is nothing. I told you this story, this sermon is not about Peter, it's about you. If there's some aspect of your life that you are very confident of yourself, you are not ready to yield to the word of God. You've made up your mind. This is what you are going to do. You've made up your mind. Thank God you are here this morning. And as I was revising this sermon, I think it was yesterday evening, God reminded me a passage to share with you. That the reason you are in the state you are today you are alive, you are well, you are looking good, you are in church. It's not because of you, it's because of God. If not for God, some of you today sitting here will be arm robber. 
Hello? If not for God, some sitting here today will be kidnappers. Some sitting here today will be prostitutes. Some sitting here today will be beggars on the street, homeless. You don't have anywhere to sleep. Everything that you are and that you have is a gift. None of it could you have accomplished by your strength. Is anyone still listening to me? Never get to the point where you say, I have made up my mind. Leave that word of God. Leave it, leave it for now. In a few instances, I have had people like that. You try to encourage them, try to counsel them. I say, no, pastor, they will tell you, pastor leave, that, leave that passage for now. Leave that passage. Leave it, leave it. I know what I'm doing. Look at your neighbor. That starts start sounding like you. You know what you are doing. Many, many instances say, oh, pastor, leave that, leave that matter, leave it. I know, I know what I'm doing. You don't know nothing. Peter was very sure. Oh, Jesus, what you are saying can never come to pass. You don't know me. Who are you anyway? Let's open to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. You see what the word of God says. Say, who make it deed to differ from another? It's a question from God. Why are you not a kidnapper? Have you thought about it? Why are you not a prostitute? Why are you not a ritual killer? The people that you are looking down on and you are condemning, what makes you better than them? And that's the answer. Who make you to differ from the other person? And what is it that you have that you did not receive? And if that receive it, why do you glory as if that has not received it? Every time you say, I know what I'm doing, I can do it, you, 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 are, you are behaving as if you, you have any capacity to bring anything to pass. Peter ended up in disgrace because he believed he was confident in his ability. Is anybody grateful that God made you who you are? That you are not a lizard. You are not an elephant. You are not a beggar on the street. You are not a kidnapper. You are not a murderer. Is anybody grateful? Why don't you arise on your feet and say, Father, thank you for who I am. Go ahead and talk to God. Say, who made you to differ? You look at them, you say they are armed robbers. You look at them, you call them kidnappers. You look at them, you call them prostitutes. Why are you different? Is it by your power? Appreciate God for his grace upon your life. For his mercy upon your life. That he made you who you are. There are some that have been in coma for many years. But God has kept you alive and well. Appreciate him. Say, Father, thank you. Without you, I can do nothing. Thank you for who I am. Thank you for what you have made me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Every trace of arrogance in you. May God destroy today in Jesus' name. The spirit of humility, may God grant unto you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. To round up that point, one of my favorite passages is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. And I often, sometimes I laugh, sometimes I weep inside when I see people behave like Peter did. Say, oh, I know what I'm doing. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Put it on the screen. Say, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof, ways of death. It, it looks right to you. You are very convinced about it. You've made up your mind. It's true. 
There is one person here that I pray for now regularly. At least three or four times I pray for that person every week, at least three or four times. We had a conversation recently, and the person said to me, Pastor, I know what I'm doing. I have a personal conviction. Hmm. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I pray for everyone here and those that are listening online. Whatever it is that you are convinced about that is contrary to the word of God, the grace to submit to the word of God, may God grant unto you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Proverbs 16 verse 18. That was the end of the story for Peter that particular season. Proverbs 16 verse 18. Put it on the screen as well. Because I know God is speaking to many people here today. You will not make a mistake that will destroy your life in Jesus' name. It's a pride. Go ahead before destruction. And a haughty spirit before when you are very confident, very proud of what you are doing. Danger is on the way. I pray for you one more time. May you never allow pride to destroy your life in Jesus' name. And you will never fall in the mighty name of Jesus. Point number four. The word of God will surely come to pass. You know, when my wife was preaching this morning, she, she preached about, and God said, and everything that God said came to, came to pass. In Matthew 26, verse 34 to 35, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, this is what is going to happen. And Peter said, I don't believe it will not happen. This is a message for you. Whether you believe or not, changes nothing. Hello? Whether you believe or not, it changes nothing. If God has said it, it will surely come to come to pass. Peter, you will deny me three times. Peter said, no, Jesus, it will not happen. Your personal conviction cannot invalidate the word of God. I traveled abroad some years ago. I think my wife was with me then and we went to one of our pastor friends. We went to his church. And he was preaching. <laughs> And he said, very late at night, very, very late at night, he got a call from a member of the church. Hey, pastor, I need to see you. Pastor, I need to see you. Pastor, I need to see you. Ah, so late at night. Pastor got there. He said, pastor, I have found a reason why I can divorce my wife. Now I have a reason I can divorce her. What? That's why you sent for the, for the man of God to come so you can tell him you now have a reason and divorce. What God has joined together. You may not like the word of God. You may not like what it is saying. But your opinion cannot change the word of the Almighty. I don't know who it is here that you are going through some experiences in your life. You know what the word of God is saying, but you are choosing to go in the opposite direction. I pray for you. By reason of this sermon, you will make a U-turn in Jesus' name. I say it one more time. By reason of this sermon, you will make a U-turn in the mighty name of Jesus. And every great thing Every great thing, every great promise of God for your life will still come to pass. It may appear that it's late, it's getting late. Can you still continue to believe God? But God has asked me to reassure you what he has promised will surely come to pass. You may not have a job today and you are wondering where will the job come from. God is asking me to encourage you and remind you that as he has promises, he will perform it. 
you may not have a child today. And you are wondering when will it come? How is it taking too long? God is saying to me, I should remind you, it will surely come to pass. I don't know what promise he has made to you. But he's saying, if you hold on to him faithfully, you do your part. You will laugh last in the mighty name of Jesus. Please rise on your feet and turn into prayer. In whatever area you are believing God for. That his word will not fail. It may have been taking long. It may appear the delay is too long. But go ahead and begin to agree with God. Begin to agree with God. That his word concerning you will surely be established. His promises concerning your life will not fail. It may not look as if things are happening. It may not appear as if things are moving in the right direction. But the promise of God concerning you will never fail. If you do your part, his promise will never fail. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Number five, as I close. And this is a, an important part of the sermon. Return into the embrace of the lover of your soul. And you will recognize this if this is your own word. Return into the embrace of the lover of your soul. Peter, in verse 45, verse 75 of that Matthew 26, the Bible said, he wept. He cried. He found out that he has been put to shame. Things did not go like he planned. The people before whom he had pronounced, talked about the power of God, they saw him denying Christ. He cried. He was ashamed of himself. He felt a sense of failure and a sense of regret. But this is what the Lord has laid in my heart to tell you. Restoration begins with the acceptance of your wrong. You can write it down. Restoration begins with the acceptance of your wrong. You know, Peter did not try to justify why he denied Jesus. The Bible said, rather, he cried. For many Christians, they will tell you, give you a thousand reasons why they slept or why, why they slept to someone, someone that they should not have slept to. Why did you commit adultery? It's not me, it's the devil. Hello? Why did you steal? Hey, it's not really me. It's because I, 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 I needed money to do something. They will look for a thousand ways to justify why they did what is wrong. And you know, the one that applies to you. Peter did not make any attempt to justify it. The Bible said he cried. He wept bitterly. I don't know in what area that you have done something wrong. Or you have become distanced from the Lord. Maybe you were closer to him before. But somehow, there is a distance. And you keep looking for a reason to justify it. Uh, I'm busy. Uh, but did not be led there. Uh, I, uh, I need money for this. Uh, you, you look, you just discover the distance will keep increasing. The distance between you and God will keep increasing. The more you are looking for reasons to justify the wrong you've done, the further the Lord goes away from you. 
in this story, Peter wept and wept and wept and wept. He found his way back to God, crying. Proverbs 28, verse 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. It's a choice that you have. You can cover it and justify it. Find a reason to explain it. You are only making your future worse. But whosoever confesses and forsakes them, the Bible says, shall have mercy. I don't know who you are, but whatever it is that you have done wrong, whatever it is that has caused a distance between you and God, you will return to the lover of your soul in Jesus' name. Don't let your past destroy your future. Peter, the Bible said, even though he denied Jesus three times, but because he did not hide, rather he wept and said, I have missed it. He went on to win thousands of souls for God. The Bible said in Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 41, he preached in one day. The man that denied Jesus three times, he preached in one day, and 3,000 souls were won. In Acts of Apostles chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, he said when Peter goes forth to minister, they will put people on the, on the, on the street so that the shadow of Peter can fall on them and they will be healed. How did he go from somebody who denied Jesus to being a miracle worker? Because he came back into the embrace of his Lord. He acknowledged that he had done something wrong. And the Lord brought him back. I want to make two calls this morning as I close. First, the story of Peter began with a kind God. In Luke 22, verse 31 to 32, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, trouble ahead. The enemy has desired to destroy your life. But I have prayed for you in advance. Peter has not done anything wrong yet. But God knew he would do something wrong. And Jesus prayed for him in advance. That is the God that we serve. He knows the wrong you will do tomorrow. The one you will do next year. But he can help you in advance. If you come into his embrace. All eyes closed. You're saying, Pastor, I need this kind of God. Who loves me enough? To pray for me in advance so that I will not miss my future. If you are that person, I want to pray for you. Come as you surrender your life to this God. He is the kindest God you will ever experience. There is none like Him. The choir will take the song Amazing Grace. You may have been coming to church for a long time, but God is beckoning to you. Come, come as you come to surrender your life. God bless you. Keep coming. God loves you more than you can imagine. He will help you in advance. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. He said to Peter, I have prayed for you already in advance. Come. Come. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. He loves you more than you can imagine. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. If you surrender to him, he will help you. Keep coming. Thank you, my brother. Let's clap for them as they come. Wherever you are, come. He will help you. Keep coming. Keep coming.
God bless you, my brother. Let's clap for them. There are many of you that I know you are coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. We are still waiting for you. Come, come, come. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. Keep coming. Let's clap for them. I will wait for you. Thank you, Jesus. Before I go to the second call, I'll make the first one one more time. There's no amount of effort you can make on your own. Without Christ, the effort will fail. Don't look at those who are around. Wow, they, what, what, they, what will they say that you are coming out? We all came out at one point or the other. When I gave my life in August 10, 1997, I was among the first that got to the front because I know that I needed Jesus urgently. The rest is history. If you are there, my brother, my sister, come. Today is your day. The Lord will help you marvelously as you surrender to him. God bless you. Come. Oh, his grace Thank you, Jesus. That come, come, come. My heart Let's clap for them. Just encourage them. My God bless you, my sister. Will Keep coming. God bless you. Come quickly. God bless you, my sister. Put the song on the screen so they can see it. Keep coming. Let's clap for them. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'll make, I, I still seek a few people in the spirit. The choice is yours. You can decide like Peter. I know what I'm doing. I can make it on my own. Or you can decide to hand over to Jesus. Today is your day. So for the last time, for today, God is calling you. Please come very quickly. I can see some of the big, big women, big men. Don't, be, don't worry. Today is your day. Come, let's take that song one more time. Uh -huh, it's not more than that. This is the step that you need. You take this step today and you will see a turn around in your life. God bless you. Come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still coming, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. God bless you. Come quickly. Clap for them. You know, sometimes we, even in the house of God, we find it difficult to, to humble ourselves. For those of you that are still there, and you know that God is talking to you, I encourage you to please come. Don't miss this opportunity. 
tomorrow may be too late. So I'll give you 30 seconds more. Take it. I was Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Come. Come. But now God is getting ready to help you marvelously. He's getting ready to help you marvelously. If, if you surrender and come. Thank you, my brother. Come, come quickly. of you in front, please say after me, my Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for saving my life. Of myself, I can do nothing. I put my life in your hands. The same way you helped Peter. Please help me to everything in the past that I have done wrong, please wipe away. And from today, be Lord over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed.